What we do know is that leaky gut which is of course the you know intestinal cell wall starts to leak and toxins from our gut seep into our bloodstream cause this inflammatory response and cause this inflammation that could go up to our brain and they could go to different organs but what we do know is that a study that we did um, or university of north texas did on our strains they actually um, took 50, 100 college students, 100 healthy college students. These are college students who feel great, have energy. There are you know, no, no medication, no diagnosis of any disease. And they found out that 50% of them had a leaky gut and didn't know it. Dr. Mindy here. Your body is in a, in a war zone. <laughs> Different parts yes. of the brain get activated depending upon how stressed you are. When you look at it from that inflammatory. That's interesting. I mean, that has some merit to it for sure. And you can't control everything. Yeah, I'd say. And what about the uh, a woman who is not pregnant, but she's aiming? I always love to tell people, welcome to the Resetter Podcast. I truly believe like I've invited you into my home. So thank you, Tina. I'm, I'm really excited to have you here. Oh, thanks, Mindy. I'm so excited to be here. You have no idea. I've been a fan of yours for a while, so I'm excited to be here. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. And you know what we're going to talk about is um, something that I haven't done a lot on this on this show and I think really dramatically needs to be highlighted, which is this idea of the gut brain access and specifically around psychobiotics, which was an interesting term that I think came about a few years ago. And I don't know if it didn't stick or if I'm just not hearing it in the circles I'm in. But when we look at this concept of psychobiotics, there's there's so much to learn about the bacteria that keep us happy. So I, I definitely want to go down that. But here's actually the the burning question I have for you, Tina, before we start. <laughs> What in the world made you want to start a supplement company? That is not an easy task. Why did you venture in, into that? Uh, I, I bleed the fifth. You know, it's ignorance. It's really ignorance. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. It has been the most gratifying career journey I've ever been on. I started out in litigation. I'm an attorney. I was in you know, doing trial work and then um, decided that lifestyle was way too much and then went into a family pharmaceutical business. And um, that was great. I'm like thinking, oh my gosh, I'm bringing life-saving medications to people. I'm making the world a better place. But after being in the pharmaceutical industry for a while, I started to see so many of the abuses. My husband and I were both yeah. in the industry. We saw a lot of the abuses. We saw the over-prescribing of medications. And we are really deep thinkers. We read a lot of Norman Vincent Peale. Uh, Wayne Dyer is like a hero. He was a hero yeah. of mine. He still is a hero, even though he's no longer with us. Um, and I just, I was not, we were, we both agreed we weren't doing our life's work. I mean, we just were not, we, this was not the way we lived our lives with our kids. We were more naturally focused anyway. And so yeah. um, through, you know, a lot of prayer, meditation, being at the right place at the right time, we were able to license these very incredible probiotic strains. And, and that's how we started this company, Just Thrive. And um, as hard as it has been, it has been so gratifying. I mean, there is not a day that goes by that I don't thank God above that we I have had, been, that he put me on this journey because it is just mm. to help people feel better. I mean, there's yeah. nothing better. Yeah. And I do want to say that when I first saw your products, I was like, wow these are these are different these are unique like it, it you you pulled me in not just when you by the title just calm but yeah. you pulled me in in what you put together in in your products but more importantly what i want to really focus on is that the fact that we are just starting to understand the microbiome and its impact on all aspects of our health but can you give our listeners just an overview of where these probiotic strains are affecting in our gut are affecting our mental health because we have I, I really think when it comes to mental health we we really have this confused we think that in order to be happy we need the circumstances in our life to be in a certain way and i the more i understand the microbiome the more i understand the human body the less i think that that's actually true and I have noticed from understanding the microbiome to the depths that I've been researching it, that actually these microbes determine our happiness probably more than how your husband is behaving, <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely. So, 
Absolutely. You hit the nail. Talk about that. Yeah. You definitely hit the nail on the head with that. I mean, it is our microbes that are determining whether we're in a good mood or not in a good mood. And, you know, we know that 95% of our our serotonin, which is our happy hormone, is actually produced in our gut. For years, I feel like psychiatrists have had their hands tied because they've been focusing on the brain. You know, they're prescribing these SSRIs and anti-anxiety meds. And really, with very minimal success... And really it's because they've been focusing on the wrong place. We've really needed to focus on the gut. We know that there's this huge gut brain connection with the vagus nerve. Um, it's one of the largest you know, nerve in our body. I call it this communication super highway because we're sending, the brain is sending signals down to the gut and the gut is sending signals up to the brain. And of course we know this, we're excited about something, we get butterflies in our stomach or we're nervous and mm-hmm. we have to go to the bathroom. You know, it's like, these are all sending signals back and forth to each other, but it's not only you know serotonin that's produced in our gut, all these other important important neurotransmitters like dopamine is produced in our gut. GABA, which is our calming hormone, is produced in our gut. So all these critical neurotransmitters are actually being produced in our gut. And we're not focusing on that when we're talking about mental health or mood health. We're yeah. really, we're focusing on our brain. Um, and I mean, there's certainly a, a place to be focusing on meditation and being calm and all of those types of things, of course, and walking in nature, because those are going to send signals, your brain's going to send signals down to your gut. But it's just this, you know, they're going back and forth to each other all the time. Yeah. I, and there's something that you, um, I, I've heard you say, which is 80% of people say that stress is affecting their, their health at this moment. It's probably even higher since post pandemic. Um, How, I mean, how do we know if there is a gut issue that is enhancing and accelerating our stress response? Like, how do we section that out? Because, you know, I can tell you there's plenty of things, even in on my happiest days, that I could be unhappy about there. And I think we all have that. It's not that life is ever going to be completely perfect. So how do we know when our stress response is because of a depleted microbiome and when it's just, holy cow, like stress has is just hit an all-time peak? Yeah, that, that's a tricky question because, you know, you don't, it's hard to tell. It's not like we could go in and get a blood work done and figure out if right. we have, you know, if it's affecting our mental health. But what we do know is that leaky gut which is, of course, the you know intestinal cell wall starts to leak and toxins from our gut seep into our bloodstream, cause this inflammatory response and cause this inflammation that could go up to our brain and they could go to different organs. But what we do know is that a study that we did um, or University of North Texas did on our strains, they actually um, took... 50, 100 college students, 100 healthy college students. These are college students who feel great, have energy. There are you know, no, no medication, no diagnosis of any disease. And they found out that 50% of them had a leaky gut and didn't know it. And so wow. what now they're estimating is that 80% of the adult population has a leaky gut and doesn't know it. And we know that when you have a leaky gut, those LPS taxes are causing inflammation in the brain and other organs. So, um, you know, it's safe to assume that if you're struggling with mood issues, that addressing the gut is going to have a profound effect on, you know, your, on how much better you feel. So talk a little bit, you just said something that's really important. And again, I want to highlight it. So everybody has a greater understanding of this. There is your gut diversity So we need to have plenty of microbes that are very diverse in order to make certain things like neurotransmitters like you're talking about. But then we also have in a leaky gut situation where these microbes are giving off a toxin. And so talk a little bit about what these LPS toxins are because I keep seeing that showing up in different health conversations. And I think it's a a fancy term that a lot of um, people aren't completely aware what it is. Yeah, so LPS stands for lipopolysaccharides, and these are toxins that are actually aren't very problematic in their in your gut. They're they're found in our gut. They're not as problematic in the gut. It's when they seep into the bloodstream that we start to see this major inflammatory response. It's what's causing autoimmune issues. It's what's causing allergies. You know, it's what's causing mental health issues. It's it, it's really the cause. This this leakiness of the gut and the LPS toxins that, again, are not problematic necessarily in our gut. It's when they get into our bloodstream that they start to cause this inflammatory response. And, and that's, that is really the root of so much disease out there. 
Yeah. And how do we avoid getting these toxins? What's uh, what are the lifestyle yeah. tools we can use? Well, the, what we really should be focusing on is sealing up that leakiness of the gut. Um, we know that we have these, we're, I mean, there's, we're faced with so many uh, disruptors to our gut health, you know, antibiotics that we take, antibiotics that are in our animal products. Um, those are incredibly disruptive to our gut lining and our, and our overall gut health. But glyphosate, which is, of course, the active ingredient in Roundup, incredibly yeah. disruptive. In fact, worse, a, a bigger disruptor than um, antibiotics because glyphosate actually only is targeting the good bacteria in our gut. So it's only killing the good bacteria, where at least the antibiotic is killing the bad bacteria with the good bacteria, mm. which is still not good. But it, I mean, it's interesting that actually glyphosate is actually more offensive to our gut health. Um, and it's why we're seeing this rise in allergies and epidemic and, you know, all kinds of autoimmune issues. You know, when I was a kid, which was a long, long time ago, I knew one classmate that had a peanut allergy, you know, um, yeah. all the way from kindergarten through the end of high school. And I went to a very large high school. Now, of course, we know you can't go to a school without peanut free tables. You can't go to a restaurant with them asking, you know, um, if you have any allergies. And I believe in large part that's due to the glyphosate and the Roundup that's sprayed all over our food supply. Um, yeah. I also think, you know, the, the chemicals, the over, you know, process of food, the, the food, the, the soil is so disruptive in our environment. All of these, the world we're living in, unfortunately, is so disruptive to our gut health and why we're living with these, this leakiness of the gut. And so, you know, avoiding antibiotics will help that, um, you know, finding, um, trying to eat a diverse group of foods. Um, intermittent fasting is a huge one for helping protect your gut. Um, also because we know that in, uh, starved state, certain bacteria, certain beneficial bacteria actually proliferate in the gut yep. in a starved state. So I mean, yep. why am I even telling you this? You know, no, this, but no, I love <laughs> it's, a, you know, it's one of the most common things that actually gets asked of me when I'm on a podcast is that there seems to be this rhetoric out there that fasting destroys your microbiome. And my, my answer is absolutely no. Like I, what happens is there is a reorganization of the microbiome in a fasted state. Old bacteria die off, new bacteria merge. So to your point, like we can actually shift the microbiome in a beautiful way using fasting. And I'm even thinking, and I wanna chat about this in a moment, like could we use a product like Just Calm and, and use it in the fasted state to accelerate the growth. And I'll just ask you right now to accelerate yep. the growth of good bacteria, because there is this really cool, unique opportunity when you're fasting to change what we're talking about. Yeah, I, we have not studied that. And so I hesitate to say anything until we've studied it to see how, like with the probi with our probiotic alone, we actually studied it in the presence of food. And we found out that the strains actually proliferate better in the presence of food. So I don't know what would happen with the Just Calm product, um, whether it would be better in a fasted state or a fed state. But we do know that have, being in a fasted state actually dramatically helps improve diversity of the bacteria, yes. which is our goal. Yes. And so, yep. the, and it is kind of counterintuitive. Like you think to yourself, well, no, that doesn't make sense. Why would it create more diversity when it's not being fed? But we do know it's been studied that actually the bacteria actually proliferate in the, in the starved state. So I, yeah. I always, in fact, myself, I was never, I hate to admit this, but I was like, there's no way I'm ever going to intermittent fast. I can't do it. I can't do my workout without food. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. But all the research that I read, I just started slowly. You know, I just started waiting another hour until I ate breakfast, then another hour. Now it's like, I don't even think twice about it. And it's like, it's just, it's so liberating to do it anyway. So um, I, it, but I was one of those, not naysayers, but it was the research on the microbiome because I'm so passionate about it that really motivated me to become a faster. Yeah. And ironically, I was the same way. No. When I first, when I first heard about fasting, I was like, oh, I could try intermittent fasting one day. Uh, maybe no. one day. Yeah. And then what I noticed is the more I practiced it and played with the principles, the actual first thing, one, two of the first things I noticed, one was energy went through the roof, but the second one was so much of like digestive challenges started to change. So oh. I, my, I had a history of candida and um, when I first started fasting, I, you know, I love looking at my tongue when I fast because I think the tongue can tell you a lot about what's going on in your gut. And there was literally, not to get too gross, but there was like a black 
line down the middle of my tongue the longer I fasted. And what I learned is that actually was candida dying off. And wow. so the first couple of like three day water fast, longer fast I did, it was really intriguing to see that black line. And then all of a sudden it, my tongue would turn pink. And do you know, I never see a black or yellow line at all anymore. And I know that, and I haven't really changed much in my diet. I just know that so much fasting, moving in and out of different fasts have really helped with something going on in my microbiome and specifically candida. So yeah. I a thousand now percent you, agree with you. Yeah. Now you have less sugar cravings because the candida is gone. It's like, it's amazing. Almost none. And, and that's, so thank you for saying that because the other thing I've noticed is that I was a sugaraholic and most people would never guess that about me. I do not crave sugar at all anymore because yeah. of fasting and then doing what we're talking about, reintroducing good bacteria so that I could keep populating those good bacteria. And what I'd like to be able to do now is partner that with this idea of how to improve uh, my, my mental health as a 53 year old woman going through or almost on the other side of menopause. So, so talk a little bit about this term psychobiotic. What is it? What strains of bacteria are they? And why are they so unique for our mental health? Yeah, so the psychobiotic strain that we work with is called Bifidal Longum 1714. And it is a psychobiotic, which is a friendly bacteria that helps support that gut brain access. So it's helping support the vagus nerve and the, um, the communication between the gut and the brain, because we want improved communication between the gut and the brain. And we know that the psychobiotic actually has been studied to actually reduce cortisol levels, which is huge because cortisol wow. is incredibly disruptive to our gut. So it's like, you know, the more stressed out we are, the worse it is for our gut. And then we know the gut is what's helping us produce those calming hormones. But then it's just, it's this, you know, never ending right. cycle. If you don't focus on, you know, your gut health and your um, and, and focus on getting a psychobiotic to help support that gut brain access. So on um, the strains that I said we work with is this Bifidolongum 1714. It's been extensively studied in um, actually bringing down the um, perception of stress. Um, it's actually, mm -hmm. we know that people who have more of the 1714 strain naturally in their body actually um, could handle stress better. We know it's helping with cognitive function. It's helping us get more into that flow state, which we all want to be in. It doesn't make you tired. It just helps you be able to like get in more into that flow state, um, that theta wave state that we all want to get into. Um, and cognitive function is another one. Like I'm always, my son's uh, in college, my youngest is in college. And whenever he has finals, I'm like, are you taking your just calm? Because I just know, you know, you need to get be, or if you're doing a presentation, I tell people, you know, you want to make sure you're on it, but it's, it's a really, really important um, it's not just important to be calm, but just improving your brain health, you know, which we all want to do as we're aging as well. And it is tricky in this age that you and I are in. Um, you know, we, I've seen so many of my friends who have just gone to the doctor. I'm just, I'm really down and they're being prescribed SSRIs and yep. the anti-anxiety and it's, it's breaking my heart. And, you yep. know, you kind of have to walk that fine line about, you know, telling them something different than the doctors told them. But I'm, I'm always about just opening the door to like having them understand that there are other options out there and and getting to the root cause i mean that is my passion my passion my passion is get to the root cause why are you experiencing this and how do we address that and and deal with it and you know working with a psychobiotic we've seen just incredible results with people um with their mood health and their overall you know cognitive function do you see like one of the things i see on my end is that women go into their 40s and the lifestyle that they've been using in their 40s has to have a shift as their hormones shift. Their hormones start to decline. And so I feel like all of a sudden this mental health uh, issue or condition really rears its ugly head. So when I hear you talk about your friends and how they're feeling, you, you know, you've referenced our age group, which I, you know, I'm, I'm about passionate right now about how do we help perimenopausal, menopausal and postmenopausal women and when we look at the loss of hormones I, and, and what we can add back in to mentally help us, do you, have, you, have you done any research just on menopausal women at all with this type of bacteria or any anecdotal studies or, or situations where you're seeing menopausal madness that is helped 
by using some a product like just calm yeah i mean it's funny i have a friend who said it saved my marriage because she's right. like i literally I, I know she's and i'm like okay i don't know if i could use that as a testimonial but she's like i literally saved my marriage because she's like yes i had no energy the probiotic alone just helped her with energy but then when she added the just calm in, it was like you know it, it's amazing because you just you don't you're able to handle things that much better um we haven't done studies per se on hormone we know that our hormone production is being done in our gut as well and so we do i, I i'm always very um passionate about just telling people when they're focusing on menopause and these years is that you've got to be taking care of your gut health in fact yes. the most respected doctors and um, menopausal experts out there are always saying you know, you need to focus on your gut health when you're dealing with menopause. And I can't stress that enough. But yeah, I've, I have just anecdotally, I've seen it like crazy with um, women yeah. and, you know, friends, because I'm of that age that have, I mean, my, I mean, a couple of my friends are like, oh, another friend was at, they were all playing tennis one day and they were like, oh my God, did you hear about Tina's new product? It's like, saved me so much. So it's, it's pretty fun. It's really fun to help your own friends and family. Oh, that, right? That's that been really, really fun. But yeah, I, as a, as a menopausal woman, that is where you start. I mean, I feel like yeah. everybody mm. should start with gut health, but mm. particularly I feel like a pregnant woman, because you're passing on, that's the only time a child is inoculated with their gut bacteria is during vaginal childbirth. And yep. as a menopausal woman, this is when your hormones are going crazy and you're losing your hormone production. You need to be focusing on your gut health to help, you know, handle all the stressors that are just, you know, coming to us. This should be the best times of our lives. And it is for Amen. me, I'm having a blast. I feel great. I'm having a blast, but I want everybody else to feel that way. And um, I think yeah. that's really important. I, there, I, I really feel like there's a transition that happens after 40 that if we could help women understand what you just said, like, let's just get women doing something as simple as adding a probiotic back in and really focusing on her microbiome, then your menopausal journey will be so much smoother. The problem is, is that we come roaring into our 40s with the same behaviors that we used in our 20s and 30s, and we all of a sudden, the menopausal symptoms are amplified. Mm -hmm. So I agree, like I'm on a mission to rebrand menopause. We have to look at menopause as the greatest time of your life. If you are putting your head down and doing the work like, like we're talking about and, and aware that there's this lifestyle shift that, that needs to happen. If we looked at it from that lens, I think we would end so much suffering, um, yeah. which would be, and you know, we do have, it's a, we're an interesting time of life because we have kids that are growing up and we have pa parents that need care. So we're sort of sandwiched in between teenagers and aging parents. So our mental health is even more important. Um, and we have even more stress that's happening to us. So I really wanna just point out to the people listening, like I agree with you, I sit here at 53 and I'm happier than I've ever been. But that's because I've been doing the work and understanding my menopausal body, trying to figure out what that best the best health path path is and giving it new tools that I never gave it like B B Longorium, whatever number you yeah. said. Yeah. Like, <laughs> 17, right? 14. Yeah. Yeah. 17, 14. Long, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just calm. That's always just thrives product. Just calm. Yes, exactly. Like, right. But this is like, there's trillions of bacteria in our, in our gut. So getting to know one strain that can be a game changer like that, it, it becomes massively important. The, the other thing I want to reach out and, and or I want to highlight is this idea of the vagus nerve, because a lot of uh, women, when they come into this menopausal experience, they're so sympathetic dominant that they've completely shut down their parasympathetic nervous system. And that vagus nerve, which is the connection from the gut to the brain, is just underutilized. And I almost feel like that we have to bring back the health of the vagus nerve in order to get the most out of a product like just calm or your or probiotics am i thinking that through right or when yep. you actually put these good bacteria in it reinvigorates the vagus nerve yeah yeah it, well it's helping improve that communication between the gut mm. and the brain and you know and the vagus nerve of course so um that's absolutely right you hit the nail on the head on that one it, it also so um, and I think it's important too that we are, you know, the fight or flight situation that we're in, um, 
we're we're constantly in it. You know, we know that yes. it was meant to be, you know, like for a saber tooth tiger coming at us, but we get a tweet where we stay in that fight or flight. We get a email, we our kids say something that upsets us. We're in a fight with a loved one. I mean, we are constantly in that fight or flight and we are not getting down from it. And that is dangerous. And people have to realize they have to get down from it. We've got to get yeah. over this. Yeah. You know, I'm so stressed. I'm so important type of mentality that the world we live in right now, we have to start realizing like the, the, you know, gold star should be that we're calm. And we went and read a book and we sat outside under a tree and read a book today, or we went on yeah. a long stroll, not a power walk, you know, and just yeah. really, I'm not that power walks, I power walk every day, but you know, there's times to stroll and there's times to just sit and relax. And we have to recognize that these are things that are going to help us go through menopause that much better. Yeah. I, I a thousand percent agree with you. Like the term that my brain keeps saying lately is like, the women are tired. We're tired. Yeah. We go in, we come into menopause and we're tired. And then this neurochemical armor that's been holding us up starts to shed and all our imbalances show up and we're just freaking tired. And yeah. so what we do instead of honoring rest is we try to work harder and do more. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. And that damages yep. us even more, which yep. actually then takes me like, when I think about that, I go back to, okay, well, what do we need to tap into? What neurotransmitters do we need to tap into to really be able to rest? And I come to GABA. And when you look at GABA, the precursor for GABA is progesterone. Mm -hmm. And we're losing progesterone. So we, we're, we're trying to overdo our lifestyle to get our symptoms to go away. We don't have the hormone that makes this calming neurotransmitters. So what are we left with? How do we calm our shit down? <laughs> and this is where I'm like, okay, we've got to turn to tools like this. So yeah. when we look at B. longorium 714, is this a strain that not only improves serotonin and dopamine, but can it improve GABA? And are there other strains and other things we can do to really bring those neurotransmitters back? Yeah. So the studies right now are showing that it's, it is helping support all those neurotransmitters, like you mentioned. Um, we don't know yet about other, what we did. It was actually interesting. We mixed another uh, probiotic strain with our bifidolongum 1714 and found mm. out that mixing them actually caused the bifidolongum 1714 effects to go away. So it's really, we're, it, we have to be focusing on studies. You know, we have to be focusing yeah. on, and that's something that's super important to us just because we see people, you know, supplement companies throw a label on there and, and and they put a whole bunch of different strains in there. And the next thing you know, it's really not working because you have to be fine. You have to find strains that were studied on that particular function. Um, and so right. we are, the studies that are on there are showing that it's bringing down perceived stress, um, improving cognitive function, bringing down cortisol levels and helping support that neurotransmitter production. Like you mentioned, the serotonin, dopamine and GABA. Yeah, which are so so critical for menopausal women. What so what about B vitamins? So I know you guys have added some B vitamins into these products. And what I find so interesting about B vitamins is that the world is obsessed. I don't know if you 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 are noticing this right now, but I feel like the world is obsessed with IV drips and shot, <laughs> you know, B12 shots. And you know, I think we're like get it into us the quickest way we possibly can. Yeah, um, exactly. But what's ironic about the B vitamins to me is that it's the microbiome that m helps you break, pull B vitamins out of your food and use them for, for your, your benefit. And you need B vitamins to make neurotransmitters and for your brain to function normally and for energy to go up. But if your microbes are depleted, you're not going to make these B vitamins. And so mm -hmm. talk a little bit about where that comes into play. Cause I can tell you in my clinic for years, if somebody came in and told me they did really well with a B12 shot, my first brain, my first thought was your microbiome's de decimated. We need to bring back the health of your microbiome if if a B12 shot is giving you that kind of energy. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. And I think that that's, that goes with everything. You know, I just feel like if your gut is inflamed, which most people's unfortunately are because of this world we're living in that's so disruptive to our gut health, we're not absorbing nutrients. We're not producing nutrients. Like our short chain fatty acid production is depleted if our gut is, you know, um, 
not in order. Um, and same thing with the B product, the B vitamins as well. So, um, absolutely. That is, it, it's like where you start with anything, because we know like you're taking, you know, you're taking vitamin D you're taking, you're eating really clean and all these great new high nutrient dense, uh, vegetables and you're not absorbing any of these nutrients because your gut is inflamed. And so it's, it's, it's ground zero for health in my opinion, including with B vitamins. Yeah. And are there certain B vitamins that are more synergistic with the bacteria than others, the probiotics? You know, I, I don't know that I have the answer to that question. I would probably have to get our microbiologist on for that one because <laughs> I'm not the formulator. So, <laughs> right. No, I was just curious because I, because what I see for the menopausal woman is that um, she's low in B vitamins, she's low in her, pro, her diversity of her microbiome. Yeah many times low in vitamin D, low in minerals, and then she comes into her 40s and beyond, and she's already depleted. And then, and, th and that depletion is amplifying so many of her symptoms. Yeah. So what I find so brilliant about your products is just how we can add these back in as we move through this really challenge or what could be a challenging time. So, right. um, and I also, at the root, and I'm curious what you think of this, at the root of what, how I feel about supplements is they should, they should supplement a really healthy diet. And perhaps you're actually not on the supplement all, all the time. You come in with the supplement and then you get, get out. So mm -hmm. what could we do if we look at your probiotics, your Just Calm, like what would be the foods that you would pair with that to make sure we get the most out of those supplements? Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing, first of all, I agree with you completely. It is a supplement. We should always start first with eating clean, eating healthy, staying away from processed foods. Um, and I would, I would say the biggest thing is just eating clean and trying to get away from any, you know, foods that are not organic. And I know that's very hard for a lot of people. So I would just say, start with baby steps, you know, even like the frozen department always has, you know, some organic fruits that you could, and vegetables that you could try to use, but try to eat clean and, um, and just go slow, like give yourself, you know, some grace. And I would do, um, I would also try to eat a diverse group of foods. Um, I try to go to ethnic grocery stores to have different types mm. of roots and tubers that you could try to, you know, get different right types of soils really is what you're doing is getting different types of soil to create more diversity. But, um, but even like we're all in this habit of eating the same foods. I think our ancestors used to eat 500 different types of foods a year and we eat like six to 12 different types of foods a year, which is crazy to think because we are creatures of habit. We eat the same thing, but eating a I really am prescriptive about it. I go to the grocery store and I try to find different types of vegetables that I haven't tried in a while or haven't had in a while and go to different grocery stores to try to find different types of foods. But obviously foods that are high in fiber, the, you know, the, pro, the high prebiotic foods, the problem, of course, if you have a dysbiotic gut and you're eating all these high fiber foods, they're going to make a, they could make a problem worse. You know, they are, they're going to feed the good or the bad bacteria and that's not good. So you just really want foundationally want to be focusing on rebalancing that gut with the probiotic and then, and then eating more high fiber foods or, or taking a prebiotic supplement. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how food has gotten complicated now too. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. So it's oh. so complicated. I was just in oh. Europe last month and I'm like, it was so easy. You know, their, their grocery yeah. stores are small. There's not a lot of choices. You just go in there and here we're like, which, oh, well, are my kids going to want this or is my husband going to want this? And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I just want to go back to Europe, live a simpler yeah. life. Yeah. It's like, war. It, to me, it's like war when you go into an American supermarket. It's like, you have to know who, which foods are there to, te to tease your taste buds into wanting more and more and which ones are going to support health. Like the, what our food industry has done here in America is just, it's absolutely horrific. I Do know we, it's like the devil's around, you know, it's like, no, yeah. I don't want that. It's like, yeah. it's so bad. You're absolutely right. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And I do the same thing and I want everybody else to not miss what you said because I do the same thing where when we go to a lot of farmer's markets, that's where we get a lot of our food from and we yeah. keep constantly go to different vendors knowing that though that food was actually grown in different soils, we'll have different microbes, different nutrients. Yeah. We get to know our farmers, talk to them. And I, it feels so much better when I'm eating a salad from the farmer's market than the one I get at the supermarket because of the, I know the care and the love that's gone into the soil in which they've grown. 
So what, yeah. uh, what do we know about soil health and microbes? You know, I know Zach Bush, I've had him on this podcast before, mm -hmm. many conversations with him. And I know that one of his discoveries, especially around hormones, was that, you know, as soon as glyphosate was introduced into our environment as this ultra pesticide, it started to destroy the good bacteria in the soils. So now the broccoli, the lettuces, what we were eating from our soils don't even have good bacteria at all. Do we have, do we have any knowledge at this time? And that was years ago I talked to him about that. Do we have any understanding if there are actually good microbes in these, in these vegetables that we're eating? Mm -hmm. Or is it really too, we're probably can assume no. Yeah, God, I sure hope not because I'm eating all these vegetables to try to, but I mean, there are, they are depleted. I mean, they are depleted. Like you go to the Hazda tribes, you go to other indigenous, indigenous tribes out there and they have, they have, they don't even know the word for depression. You know, they don't know the word for right. sadness. I mean, they are not experiencing any of the things we're experiencing here in America and the Western world. So, um, I don't, I mean, I, I, I'm an optimist. And so I sure hope that there's some, you know, type of nutrients still left, but certainly they're depleted. They're not the way, you know, they weren't, they're not like they used to be, you know, with our ancestors. And I, I sound like an old lady because it's like, you know, oh, it's not like our houses aren't built the way they used to, but it, it's right. the truth. I mean, it's yeah. really no different. We're dealing with the same issues with our vegetables and our soil. Our soil is is really over farmed. It's depleted a lot of nutrients. I mean, I always say the strains in our product actually are the same strains that our ancestors used to get from the soil, from our environment. Mm -hmm. And if we had that soil, like we would never need this probiotic at all. Um, it's just that we aren't getting those same type of bacteria. So that's key because what I really think that people think when it comes to these strains of bacteria is that they're optional. Oh, yep. I'll dip into a probiotic. I'll dip into this just calm. And we think that they're, oh, maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. But what I want people to understand is that the food you're eating is being grown in these depleted soils. So all of a sudden this taking a supplement with, you know, B Longorium 1714. Did I get that right? It's no longer, <laughs> close, it's, close. <laughs> it's no longer op optional. It's no longer optional. And so we have to start to bring this back if we want the mental health that our ancestors had. That's right. Yeah, we absolutely have to get these bacteria back in us. And there's not very many ways to do it. And that's what was so exciting about when we launched is, you know, we were disruptors in the market. We brought something that was a mm. completely different story. You know, the idea before was to like reseed the gut, put in a probiotic strain. Most of those probiotics are dying before they ever get to the intestines. Um, with these, they are actually the, the same type of strains that were found in our soil. And they are, they actually don't become alive until they hit the intestines because that they were meant, mm. we evolved with these strains. So our strains, when you get them, they're dormant. They don't need to be refrigerated because they're dormant in the bottle. They're, they're not mm. live microorganisms. They don't need to be refrigerated. In fact, to be refrigerated actually to me is a sign of a weak probiotic because if it needs Ooh. to be refrigerated to stay alive, how in the world would it ever survive your body temperature if it can't withstand the room temperature of the store shelf? Like on the store shelf, it would never survive. It would die. So how's it going to survive your body? And it, what, the answer is it doesn't. We've studied this over and over again. And then when it hits the stomach, there's all this acid in the stomach that it's meant to be the gastric barrier. The majority of the probiotics on the market, especially those in the refrigerator, are dying because of the stomach acid, where our strains Crazy. are actually dormant because that's how they were found in the soil. They were dormant in the soil, and then you swallow them, they're dormant. They hit the stomach acid, they're dormant. It's not till they hit the intestines that they take their shell off. And that's when they become alive. That's when they go into their live vegetative cell state. And that's where they're actually making a true change in the gut. They stay there for about 21 to 28 days. They're, so they're attaching to the intestinal cell wall and they're talking to other bacteria. These bacteria are very intelligent. They're communicating to each other all the time. And so these, these strains, the bacillus strains that are used in Just Thrive, actually have the ability to change the makeup of your flora which is wow. profound. I mean, I don't know of any, we have a study that showed a 30% favorable shift in two and a half weeks with one of our strains. It actually caused this 30% like shift in the garden. So if you imagine like a garden, it's making that garden get rid of the weeds in the garden and helping the pl plants flourish. It's another way to create diversity 
rather than the old way or the conventional way that you see out there is just to throw a plant in that garden. You know, we're, yeah. these strains are actually making this change. But, and these, again, it's not because we did anything to engineer them. This is the way these strains were naturally, our ancestors evolved with these bacillus subtilis strains. And it's yeah. the way that these were in our soil and they need to be back in our soil. Yeah, it's, it's so brilliant. Where, where does fermented foods fit into this? Can we get these strains in fermented food? Yeah, great question. So I'm a huge fan of fermented foods. I eat them all the time because I know they're so nutrient dense and I think they're incredibly supportive of your gut health. They, you cannot get these strains from um, fermented foods. You huh. just, this, in, you, even if you could ferment with these f strains, but the same problem is they'll become alive when you ferment with them. And therefore, they're, once they're alive, they'll be killed off by the stomach acid. So, but they're, they're super beneficial to you, but it's just they're not a replacement for a spore based probiotic because the spores actually are going in and delivering these and creating, and, and they're live microorganisms. The fermented foods are similar to most probiotics, they're actually going to die by the time they get into the intestines. It doesn't mean they don't do anything, they're going to create some type of symptomatic relief and all that, but they're not making a true change. And with fermented foods, you get so many other gut health benefits, right? Just the ferment yeah. alone, but they're not a replacement. Okay. Well, it's so funny because as you were talking, I'm like, oh my gosh, what if all of a sudden I've been telling everybody for years, I'm like, I, I get, you don't like fermented foods, but you didn't like, you didn't like tequila shots when you were in college. <laughs> And you did it anyways, because you knew that there was going to be a mental diff, you know, change in your brain. Well, I feel the same thing about the fermented foods. If you don't like it, eat it anyways. Yeah. But, and, but what I'm also hearing is like, it, yes, that's a part of this puzzle, this mental health puzzle when we're rebalancing the microbiome. It's not the complete picture. Right. It just isn't a replacement for a spore-based probiotic because it, it won't make that shift in your gut flora. Right. And, and what about the astrobilome? You know, we have this set of bacteria that break estrogen down. Um, do we know anything about which, you know, I've been, this is one thing I've been really doing some research on is like l ruteri, um, l rominos, like those have been highlighted as being key bacteria to break down estrogen. And mm -hmm. one of the things we're seeing right now in the menopausal world is this resurgence of HRT. And I feel like in that we're going to all, we're going to lead women down another disappointing path because HRT is going to work for some women. It's not going to work for others because you still need these microbes to break estrogen down. Have you guys done any yeah. research on the strains that break the estrobilome down or what your products do to be able to help the breakdown of hormones? Yeah, we haven't done any studies on our strains, but this is in the pipeline for sure. Cause we know this is such a, important topic right now for me personally. And I know we're, I'm trying to push it just because we want to make sure that this is research and we have the research before we speak on anything. We really always want the research behind it. But again, you know, we know that the breaking down of estrogens happening in our gut, we need to be supporting our gut health. I mean, it is, it is so foundational. And, and I love that you have, you know, you've read the st studies on those particular strains. It's really important. You know, we see this all the time with probiotics, you know, you see, um, you know, a bifidolongum, like ours is bifidolongum 1714. And people will say, oh, well, that's straight, that study showed XYZ function. But then another company will take a product that's like, oh, we've got bifidolongum in there. But that is that bifidolongum, that generic bifidolongum is nothing like that bifidolongum 1714. Mm. It's a very different function. We have to make sure that the strains that you're using to cite studies are actually in the product and the studies are on that formulation of the product. That's really important. Like I said, that bifidolongum 1714 study we did when we added another bifidolongum negated all the benefits of the 1714 oh. strain. So it's really, and that is the, that's what I'm trying to bring to the surface in the probiotic space and the supplement space is like, I love when people go to any probiotic. I'm just happy that they're getting away from pharma and that they know enough yeah. to be focused on a probiotic in your gut health. But, and eventually they'll, they'll learn enough to know that th this is, you know, where you want to be. But um, it's just really important as people are navigating this is that you're looking at the strain and the the strain ID, which is that 1714 or the, the Bacillus subtilis HU58, that you look at that HU58 study and see what type of 
you know, research and what kind of functions that the research has shown and, and, and know that they're working together. You just in, expanded my vision on this because I was always thinking when you look at a probiotic, you want one that has the most amount of strains. You know, we hear like 100, million, 100 billion CFUs with 34 strains. And what I'm hearing from you is, hey, don't be fooled by the amount of strains because what we really want to know is the power of each individual strain and some of them may negate each other. Is that, is oh, that what I'm hearing? Yes. I mean, that is one of the biggest myths out there um, is that you want a high dose multi-strain probiotic. I mean, first of all, there's no research that a high dose, like high CFU count, like 50 billion, 100 billion CFUs is better than one that has 3 billion CFUs. I mean, our product has 3 billion CFUs and showed a 30% favorable shift after two and a half weeks. I have, I don't know of any probiotic that has a study of that magnitude. We have our product with three strains has a double blind human clinical trial and leaky gut showing that it's sealing up the tight junctions. What's happening now is we've got this, you know, America more is better. We want more strains, yes. more. That, <laughs> there right. is a big, big problem with multi-strain probiotics. And one of them is that um, you have this 15 count strain product and what we now know is that people don't know what happens when they're together. They're, they haven't studied what happens when they go yeah. together. Um, so one strain could take over another strain. So a strain that's listed on the bottle isn't actually in the product. A bigger problem is two strains could come together and create a whole new strain that we don't know anything about. We don't know wow. if it's beneficial. We don't know if it's detrimental. We don't know. Um, and in fact, there was just a study done by the Weissman Institute recently um, that actually talked about these high dose multi-strain probiotics actually are, um, they, they actually competed with the antibiotic um, use and it was actually competing with your own natural gut flora. So we really wanna be careful that you are using a probiotic that has a strain ID associated or the, the gold standard is that you have a study with that formulation, with those exact formula uh, strains that are used in the product. That, that's really the gold standard. And you're just not seeing that in the industry, unfortunately. Yeah. Do you have a, a, a post antibiotic protocol that you use with your products? Because that is one of, the, one of the things I've been preaching for over 20 years is if you have to go on antibiotics, you wanna make sure that you replenish those bacteria. Because the last study I saw, and correct me if I'm wrong, is like 80 to 90% of all the good bacteria and the bad bacteria get wiped out with with one round of antibiotics. Yeah. Do, mm -hmm. yeah. How would we use that your products to repopulate that? Is that something I would hope that you're out preaching? Oh my God, am I preaching? And you're right about that study. Like that's how much. It, and it's not just that 80 to 90 percent of your beneficial bacteria is wiped out. It's that it lasts for a year to two years. I mean, it's not like oh right away it just gets back when you're done taking the antibiotic. Um, well, here's what's exciting with this. We actually studied this with our strains. They could be used at the same time as being on an antibiotic and will not wow. die out. Most probiotics will be killed in the presence of, most probiotics will be killed in the presence of an antibiotic. We actually studied ours with one of the strongest probiotic or antibiotics out there used with liver encephalitis patients and showed that ours survived completely. Um, so we would suggest when you're on an antibiotic to take two probiotics at the same time. Our normal dose is just one a day with food. Um, but we would suggest to take two at the same time when you're on an antibiotic, but at the minimum take one. And then, um, and then after a couple months, maybe three months, keep on with that two a day post antibiotic use, um, because Amazing. you have got to replenish that gut bacteria and help bring our good bacteria back to life. Uh, that you solved a problem that I needed the solution to about 10 years ago. Okay. Because <laughs> well, never I were too late. <laughs> I would always tell my patients like, hey, if you go on an antibiotics, don't take the probiotic while you're on the antibiotic because you're just killing everything. It's yep. just, you gotta come right back in immediately following that and repopulate that. But yeah. it always felt like a horrible answer because I'm like, oh my God, for two weeks, you're on this antibiotic, you're decimating the microbes, I feel really bad, but you know, now you have a, a solution there, which is incredible. Yeah. Talk a little bit about prebiotics, because I also think that what I've seen in your products and what I know about these bacteria is that not just adding them in is is helpful, but actually giving them the food that in this prebiotic pieces that will help them grow. What, what do we need to know about prebiotics? 
Yeah, well, prebiotics are really important. And the one thing is we can get prebiotics from food. So, you know, with the probiotic mm. strains, we're not getting that. We're not getting it from our environment. There's really no replacement for that in our food supply. The prebiotics you can get from food, but we do know that most people aren't eating enough of those prebiotic foods on a regular basis to really support the gut health. But um, yeah. it's what's important. A prebiotic is basically the fertilizer for that garden. So if you envision a garden and the garden's been stepped on and trampled on and there's weeds growing all over, the probiotic, think of the probiotic as the gardener. It's going in there, getting rid of the weeds in the garden, actually getting those plants that have been stepped on, trampled on and having them come back to life. The prebiotic is the food, the, the fertilizer mm. for those good, good plants. And um, the problem with many prebiotics on the market is that they are they can't distinguish between the beneficial, the weeds and the plants. So they're feeding both. And that's why mm. so many people will go to a prebiotic and like, oh, it made me feel so much worse because it's actually feeding the um, detrimental or the pathogenic ah. bacteria. And so that's why we did not launch a prebiotic for quite some time because we couldn't find the particular um, fibers that will only uh, target the beneficial bacteria. So these oligosaccharides in our product actually only target the beneficial bacteria. They don't target the you know bad bacteria in the gut. And, and that was really, really important to us. So um, w again, we always will recommend people start with the probiotic because that the gardener needs to do its work. And then you can introduce the prebiotic um, and start noticing the difference. And, and then you're going you're to create way more diversity. It's one of the most effective ways to create more diversity is by adding the prebiotic um, in addition to intermittent fasting and eating at ethnic grocery stores and things like that. What are, just so people know, what are some of your favorite prebiotic foods? Because I, oh. and, I mean, it's anything fibery, right? But let's just, yeah. just so we can make sure that people are adding these in. Yeah. Um, so artichokes, like Jerusalem artichokes, oh, I yeah. love. Um, asparagus, I love. Onions, I love all the time. That's, that's usually, those are usually my go-tos. How about yes. you? What do you like? What are some yeah, of your Yeah, no, I, you know, artichokes are definitely my favorite. Yes, but even the nuts them. and seeds, the um, the raw, unpasteurized, you know, nuts and seeds, I I add a lot of, when I make a salad, I actually put in the salad as many different types of greens. So I'll do, you know, um, a microgreen, I'll do a spring mix, I'll add in parsley, I'll do mint. Like I try to add as many greens and then I take seeds and I'll put in um, some pumpkin seeds into there. Sometimes I'll put some chia seeds, hemp seeds. I'll even yeah. take sauerkraut and I'll mix it into my salad just because I can get sauerkraut into my family. So to yeah. me, a salad is a is a prebiotic meal for my bacteria, but I, yeah. you know, it tastes good too. Oh, I that's awesome. Yeah, I love that. I like to add the seeds in too. So that's a good that was a good tip. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. And what about SIBO though? You know, I do we have so many people that in our reset academy, um, people that I have coached over the years, SIBO is a big issue um, where, you know, they get bloated after fiber. Mm -hmm. What do we know yeah. about your products for SIBO? Yeah, well, that I mean, a lot of times people just have a really bad reaction with a probiotic with SIBO because it's actually contributing to that overgrowth in the small bowel. Um, we know right. with the spores that are used in the Just Thrive are actually don't do that. So a lot of times, you know, practitioners will say don't take a probiotic if you have SIBO, um, but with the probiotic that the strains that we use, that actually wouldn't be necessary to avoid it because it's actually helping. You know, like I said, these strains are very intelligent bacteria. They are going to do something different in your gut than they will in mine because they're reading that they're doing something called quorum sensing. They're reading that microbial environment. And so they won't contribute to that overgrowth in the small bowel. So, um, yeah. and then, yeah, of course, people with SIBO, I would be careful with, you know, just going slowly with the prebiotic mm -hmm. eventually, but it is targeting the beneficial bacteria. But I would definitely start with a probiotic to help clean things up a little bit and um, get rid of that overgrowth in the small bowel and then start introducing the prebiotic very slowly. And what, what would you say to people who say, well, isn't our probiotics, isn't this just all woo woo that we're talking about? My medical doctor doesn't really know anything about this. Um, why is the medical community not advocating for this? Like this can't be that powerful, as powerful as we're saying, because my healthcare system that I've operated in doesn't acknowledge it. What, what do you say to that mentality? I would say that um, medical schools are funded by big pharma. And um, we know that doctors are, 
you know, good people, very smart, um, ill or well-intended people. Um, but they are being educated by big pharma. I mean, they go into medical school, they're excited, they got in, they're working hard and, but they are being fed what big pharma is telling them. And it, it's, you know, you've heard this a million times, but it's not a healthcare system. It's a sick care system. Yeah. And, you know, they're never getting to the root cause. Like how many doctors say, you know, they go in, I have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, whatever it is. And it's, you know, they're not talking about your lifestyle or they're not talking about what, what are you eating? Or they're just focusing on, well, here's, here's something to fix it. And that was w the reason why we, my husband and I were in the pharma industry. We left that to go into this business because it was something that was very passionate to us. We saw our relatives, you know, they'd be on one pharmaceutical and then another pharmaceutical caused skin issues. And then another pharmaceutical called caused joint pain. And before you knew it, she was on 12 different medications and never getting better. And, yep. you know, it, it just, it's, it's kind of disgusting. You know, it, it just yep. brings out such a, like, I get so passionate about this because I just want people to start focusing on empowering themselves, you know, go yes. to your doctor, but just imp go there empowered, ask for the blood test that you want to, you yes. know, doctors aren't even testing for C-reactive protein. I mean, why aren't yes. they looking at inflammation by your heart? I don't understand it. It's like, it's, it I don't understand it mind. either. I it, know it's, it's, it's malpractice. I mean, literally like it is absolute malpractice. And I want to point out something that you said that I just want people to understand that medical schools are funded by pharmaceutical companies. So you better believe that what they're learning is going to be through the lens of these pharmaceutical companies. Just, you know, I think that is so critical for people to understand when you walk into your doctor's office that that's for many. And I agree with you. There's so many big hearted doctors. It's just the training they got was through that lens. And so that's their toolbox. Do you, yeah. and I know this has nothing to do with probiotics or, but since you worked in the pharmaceutical world, how do we start to have better conversations with our doctors about this? Because mm -hmm. some doctors are really open and some are shaming and shutting and gaslighting and shutting their patients down. Yeah. I mean, I just try to, you know, kindly empower them. And unfortunately those types of doctors, I would never go see again. You know, the ones that are right. not open-minded, the doctor I go to, I mean, she is a functional med or not, she's a integrative medicine doctor and she's much more open minded And I'll say, oh, I, I, you know, I started this supplement and this really helps. She's like, oh, what's the name of that one again? And, you know, she's really open and she wants to learn. I think, you know, you can't stop learning in these doctors who are like, no, this is the way it is, or no, it, it, you just don't go see that doctor anymore. I mean, yeah. that's the change. We just don't go to those doctors anymore. And you just seek out, you know, we spend hours on the phone or on, you know, Instagram or Pinterest looking at recipes and all this stuff. Like we need to spend hours like investing in our health and understanding our health and being empowered when you go to the doctor and saying, these are the blood tests that I want. They can't refuse you those blood tests, like get the blood test that you want and learn more about what you need. And it's, it's been a process even for me, you know, I've, I don't know everything either. I'm always learning. I'm always trying to understand better. And that's what I would just, and, you know, and really it's people like you, Mindy, that have a platform that are spreading this message to people. I mean, yep. it is literally one of our biggest passions as a company is to empower people and why we invest in our blog so much because I just want people to be empowered to understand when they go to the doctor the information that they need and, and getting to the root cause. Why do I have this allergy? Why do I, you know, people will always say, well, I, I don't bloat unless I eat this. Well, you shouldn't bloat when you eat something. I mean, that, that, that's a sign that there's something going on. And I think that's right. It's not about putting, it's not about just eliminating it. We should be introducing lots of different foods in our diet and, and we don't want to eliminate foods. We want more foods. So, oh, yeah. I'm off on a soapbox. No, our time, I love it. I was like, <laughs> preach, Tina, preach. Yeah. This is exactly <laughs> This is exactly my message. I am trying to get people to believe in their bodies again, especially women, because women have suffered more in this modern world than men, unfortunately, because of our hormonal profile. But then when you walk into the doctor's office and you're, you're getting shamed and gaslighting, that's not okay. I, a, a thousand percent, you go find another doctor. And I actually think the most important question you can continually ask your doctor when you're sitting there is why? When they mm -hmm. give you a fancy diagnosis, you say, why do I have that? When they say your genetics, you say, give me another answer. What else I, can I do to overcome my genetics? When they want to yeah. put you on a medication forever, you say, why? When can I ever get off? Like 
We have to question and we have not been questioning. We have so much respect for their authority and we are not questioning them and trying to work with them. And that's what I just heard and what you just said. So I am, I am a kindred yeah. soul in that, in that mission with you for sure. Yeah. I have goosebumps so. all over I when I mean, cause it's, it's so true. I just, I want people to keep questioning and, and empower themselves and remind themselves that our bodies are beautifully designed to heal themselves. We are resilient. Yes. And that should yes. be our goal is that we are building a body that's resilient, that we are resilient to things that come our way. And so if we focus on that and remind ourselves that we are beautifully designed to heal and, and yes. we are, we have to get to the root cause of it. Amen. Amen. So where do people start with your products? Cause I mean, there's so many good ones. Where do they start? Where's the best bang for their money? Like just so we, cause I, I hope those of you that are listening are really dedicated to your gut health now for your mental health. So where do we start with this? Yeah, I always recommend that everyone starts with the probiotic, um, the Just Thrive probiotic. Um, and I would recommend always to do the 90 day just because I feel like that's when you're, you, you might see some results immediately, you know, maybe if you have gas or bloating or whatever it is, you might start seeing some results right away. Most people do, but by, by 90 days, you're going to start seeing other things like more energy, better sleep, all these other great side effects that come from having a healthy gut. Um, and, and then, you know, after a couple of weeks, you could start introducing maybe the Just Calm product. Um, a lot of times people want to start them at the same time, and that's perfectly fine. But um, I would really strongly recommend starting with the probiotic and maybe three weeks later, starting to introduce the Just Calm or the prebiotic, whatever it is, but I wouldn't start all of them at once or even two of them at once because start journaling and see what you notice um, and see what improvements you start to see. Um, I do say with the probiotics, some people may experience die off, which is a common thing that will happen. We don't, a lot of people don't, but don't get freaked out about that. Die off is just the pathogenic bacteria dying off and leaving a toxin residue and may cause some more gas and bloating. That's okay. Don't freak out about that. Don't worry about that, but just go slowly. You might want to start with one capsule every other day, or you could open mm. the capsule and mix it with food or drink and um, do half of the capsule one day, half the capsule the other day. I think it's easier just to do one capsule every other day. Um, and then do, don't worry about if you start feeling that there's nothing wrong, just go slow. Um, and that actually means it's working. So don't be right. freaked out about that. Yeah. What, um, to, to, what die off symptoms other than bloating, anything else that we would know to go slower? You know, like just, um, any gas or, um, or, um, constipation, diarrhea, mm. any digestive type issues. Okay, um, great. that's usually what you'll see. Um, and then you then start with like the, either the prebiotic, you could next go to the prebiotic or you could go to the Just Calm, um, you know, whatever. We have a product coach on our team. Um, so if anybody wants to know what products to go further on, you could always call and her name is Emily. You could always speak to her. She's amazing. Um, and then I would say, um, yeah, the 90 day is just really important. I, I mean, the best bang for your buck is to do the 90 day subscription because it's the best discount for the 90 day. And then the subscription, you get a further discount and you could of course cancel at any time. Yeah. And I think that you bring up a really valid point that it's, it's consistency over time that you're going to see the change. One of the things I think happens to us when we go to supplements is we use them like medication. We want to take it and within a day or two feel a difference. And I think it's, it doesn't work like that. You're reestablishing a, 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 a mechanism in your body that's natural. And we don't know, some of you might in 30 days, it might work really quickly. And some of you, it might take 90, some might take 120, depending on your antibiotic use, birth control use, steroid use, stress levels, diet, like all of that factors in to the repopulating of the microbiome. So yeah. would you agree? Yeah, I totally would agree. Absolutely. And, um, I will also say that we, just in case I don't, I don't want to forget this, is that we do have the 20% discount on the 90 day, only if, for, if you use PELS, P-E-L-Z, um, only because normally we'll do like a 15% discount um, if I'm on a podcast or whatever, but I really feel strongly about the 90 day that people should like stick with that. And so yes. that's why I've just started to do like the 20% off for the 90 day just to see it because once people are on it and it start, they start feeling these incredible results, it's, it's really profound. Yeah. And I would say thank you for that because that's one thing I see in making supplement recommendations is that people don't give it enough, a long enough time. So that's amazing. 
Yeah. So, I, okay, I got to finish up on my last two questions, which are my favorite. So okay. our, theme this, our theme this year is self-love. So do you have a self-love practice? And it, to me, in self-love is owning what you're really good at. So the second part of the question is, what's your superpower? What do you bring to the world that is so unique and, and so necessary for this world? Yeah, well, my self-love practice is walking. I love to walk. It just it it just puts me in the best mood. I, and I walk outside. And I'm from Chicago, so even in the winter, I walk outside when, unless it's really dangerously cold or I super dangerously icy. But for the most part, it doesn't matter. I'm like the mailman. I like I you know <laughs> I go outside no matter what. I love what. it. Um, I love it. And my superpower, um, I think, is just bringing. I, I love relationship building. I love people. I love being around people. I, I love bringing people together. I, I was ordering an outside patio um, set yesterday, and um, the the users um, or the manufacturer's website was really hard to navigate. And so I was on the phone with him for an hour, telling him about why he should go to Shopify. And I started. To, I'm like, we could talk and collaborate about an entrepreneur. I want to help you out. And so I just genuinely love helping people, and I love putting people together and being around people. So I guess that's my superpower. I love it. You know what? I'm the same way. I like when I, when somebody like crawls into my heart, I'm like, oh my God, you need to know the other people here in my heart. Yeah. You all should connect with each other because exactly. there's some pretty profound people. So uh, I, yes. I just love that I, a thousand percent. And I, you know, I just want to say thank you, Tina, because it is not easy making a supplement making a, a, there's so many bad supplements out there that you can make very cheaply, that you can just push out there, make a profit. So to take a vision and make a supplement, make sure that it works and have the heart and integrity in which you all operate from, that's a rare find. That's absolute rare. So thank I just you. thank you. I so greatly appreciate your compassion and vision for the world and what you've done to bring this to us all. So Deeply appreciate you. Oh, but thank you, Mindy. And right back at you. I love the message you're spreading to the world. And there needs to be more people like you out there. Mm, thank you. We're, we're more powerful together. Agreed. That's right. So, That's right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Tina. Appreciate you.